Hello Panthers, and welcome back to LRS TV Studios. This week will be filled with fun things to see. Let's start by discussing the schedule and our upcoming events in LRS. On October 4th, there was a golf tournament in memory of Bob Budson. We have no school on October 11th and October 14th. We will have PSATs for the 9th, and 11th, 9th through 11th grade this week on the 18th. Pals is donating us breakfast food. This will be followed by an early release on the same day. This is also Fire Safety Week, where pre-K through 5th learns about fire safety. They will be learning a tip a day about fire prevention. On the first day, they'll be learning about smoke detectors or fire, like, and fire alarms. On the second day, they'll learn about escape plans. On the third day, they'll be learning about the good old stop, drop, and roll. On the fourth day, they'll be learning about how to call 911 when in a fire situation. Then, on the 19th, the basketball team will be having a cornhole tournament to raise money for the team to get new things. Yeah, Black Mountain, and it was like a like four-hour hike, three hours, I mean, three, couple, a couple hours, and it was really fun, the view was super great. We played Duck Duck Goose and Tag. Um, uh, hiking? I don't, I forgot. Me too. And it's cold. And it's, uh, we got to, um, hang out there and eat snacks and lunch. Uh, yeah, we got to look at the pretty walks and we uh, got to get to touch the tip of the mountain. Have to, but if you want to, you could. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Um. Now that Asher's wrapped up the K through fourth hike, let's move over to Jane's story on homecoming. Thank you, Hunter. Let's shift to homecoming in the groups behind the scenes. First, we're going to Ellie Wilcox and Meredith Barnes, who are part of the Athletic Council. Uh, so right now we've been planning the dance, and we've put uh, flyers up around the school for everyone to know about it. The theme's going to be Night for the Stars. Dance is just one thing we've done. Um, Mr. Koval, Ms. Hubbard, and a lot of the faculty have planned a float for the students on uh, grades, uh, I believe it's middle school, and then... 9 through 12. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be happening happening today, uh, as well as a bonfire on Friday night. I like being involved in like a lot of the groups and like student council, athletic council. Like I think it's fun to be like a part of the the groups to help like bring the community together. Like doing the floats, we're able to like get out into the community so everyone can come like watch us and like. It like brings more school spirit and homecoming like for all schools has kind of like started to die a little. So it's nice to like start to like plan more activities and help like bring homecoming back. So I think I definitely enjoy like planning events and doing stuff for Athletic Council. I agree. <laughs> what she said was perfect. Yeah. Next up is Cami Ritchie, who will inform us on how the student council contributed to the homecoming day. So how they help with homecoming is that they designate for each classes what kind of items they can sell. So for freshmen, they typically do pies and like bake sale type of stuff. The sophomores do crock pots, so anything that can really go in a crock pot. And then juniors typically do walk and tacos, drinks, candy, and usually that's the biggest money maker besides the snack shack, which is through the Lisbon Lions Club. And the seniors have that, and they sell all sorts of things like hot dogs, burgers, almost typical like restaurant stuff. So usually it goes in order from seniors to freshmen who make the most money. But the freshmen this year actually did really, really well, especially with their <laughs> hats that they were selling. Um, I think they made a lot of money this year, which is really good. And then they also kind of are in control of like the placement of the booths. So we typically, this year we did it by classes uh, and then had additional booths. So like Chat Club, which I'm the president of, we had a booth for like educating about rescue animals and we raised a bunch of money for a local uh, 
animal rescue called Second Chance. So you can also have clubs or other additional programs like Gear Up. Also for homecoming, um, like organize and execute the pep rally. So this year, my sister as the president um, helped like organize all of that. And we had a certain someone who I can't name um, be the Panther and do a little dance to Fiend running out. But student council are the people that kind of plan and think through and organize pep rally and then homecoming the day of with all the booths. So, yeah. Most definitely. I love collaboration and working with others and um, it's just really fun to have a space where I can brainstorm ideas and then see the positive impact that it has on the school and the community. Now that we have gotten input on those behind the scenes, let's take a look at homecoming day itself. This was Saturday, October 5th, and we had a couple of soccer games as well as great stands. Speaking of stands, thank you to all people who donated and purchased the items being sold at the stands. This money will go towards our senior trips as well as caps and gowns. Once again, thank you all who contributed to the stands, and we hope to see you next year. Let's see what Sawyer has to say about New England Wiretech. New England Wire Technologies is located on Main Street, Lisbon, and is important for the town of Lisbon. So, New England Wire Technology has been around since 1898. We just uh, celebrated our 125th year of being in business last year. What do we make? We make specialty wire. We make wire for medical, we make wire for soup conductor, we make wire for ground strapping, we make uh, wire it's for very, very special projects. We don't make it for construction or um, say uh, telephone, none of that. Very, very special wire is what we make. New England Wire Technologies does a lot for the town of Lisbon such as donating the girls' soccer field, as well as cleaning up the fields for sports. New England Wire Technology also maintains the community pool and donates the public courts in Lisbon. They also provide a lot of jobs for people that live in Lisbon and surrounding towns. And again, what do we do for the school? I make a list of things here. Um, we do internships for, for Lisbon students. We've had students here for learning electricals and plumbing and machine shop use. Uh, we typically hire somewhere between 18 and 25 students in the summer. These are college students who are looking for money uh, and getting paid $20 an hour plus to come back to work here, so up and go to, to school. We, uh, the school we, and the town, we, we loan equipment and we provide uh, maintenance personnel to support the school and the town. We have a lot of very specialized people can do things. Uh, for the school, we donate monies to the STEM program. We also have provide tours for classes. Some classes in the school want to come down and we provide the tours for them. Um, a lot of our personnel are involved in Lisbon School Board to help set policies for the schools. We maintain a soccer field here for the, for the girls' soccer team and for the town. We, uh, we provide monies for things like the North Country Chamber Music Presentation. And we usually provide three to four scholarships per year for graduating seniors. And we allow uh, use of our facility for school activities. And we coordinate with the math department usually for a special uh, statistic class, which we do it. And we do, we also allow job shadowing. So I think you know, New England and, and the town of Lisbon and the school is synonymous. Uh, New England will always do what we can to support the town. New England Wire Technology has been working on a new 38,000 square foot addition. The addition uh, in, that we're building right now, what's that's going to do? That's going to allow us to reorganize the, the company. We're going to be moving our, uh, our facility in terms of machine shop across the street, which will be on that side. A third of it will be machine shop. We're building a state-of-the-art silicon rubber extrusion in the middle portion of the, of the company, and I mean state of the art, and then we'll have another 12 to 13,000 square feet for growth here, and uh, it'll be, it'll be uh, excellent for the company, we'll provide growth opportunities for the, for the company, and 
I think uh, it will be make New England a much more competitive and uh, company that already is can grow f faster based on what we have for facility. We're also uh, populating uh, a Littleton plant. We have a plant in Littleton as well. Hello Panthers, today I will be talking about the recent soccer games. Our varsity team both suffered some devastating losses, the boys being 2-6 and the girls being 0-4. The middle school girls had a great first win against Lindwood's team, but the boys lost. That's all for homecoming games. The boys also lost their first game against Moulton Grove with a score of 9-2. Then, both teams played Groveton, the girls losing 3-0, and the boys getting an unexpected win when they came back from a 2-0 deficit. They came back and won the game 3-2. Then, the boys played Mount Royal, and beat them 3-0, to zero, while the girls beat them 3-2. to two. That's all for our game recaps. Now we'll hear from Augusta for our Coach Spotlight. What team did you coach? I helped coach the middle school basketball, girls basketball team. Why did you become a coach, and what made you want to coach? Um, I became a coach because I think that sports are a great outlet for students who want to be active and learn skills for on and off the court. and. I've seen these girls grow and into great athletes and I love being a part of it. Do you have anyone helping you? Um, I was the helper. I helped my husband coach. How do you feel your team did? Oh, my girls did a fantastic job. They were wonderful. They had great sportsmanship and they went toe to toe with some tough teams and they worked hard every game. On October 1st and 2nd, the Paws group went on an overnight hike to Galehead Hut. The group hiked three 4,000 footers, including Galehead, North Twin, and South Twin. Tuesday night, they gathered at the lodge where they did group activities and learned about the hut. They got dinner and hung out for a while until lights out. The next morning, they got breakfast and got ready for a long day of hiking. On Wednesday, they hiked South Twin and North Twin. The weather was beautiful and at the summit you could see all the fall foliage. Red. Football. Steelers. Yes. On every Wednesday in September, we would go to a place in Vermont called, called Stable Connections, and which it helped our class work on team building and, and, and how well to be calm and collective. It was a very enjoyable experience, and I hope to uh, go there again. What, the first activity it, we the first activity it, that it, we did was is we had to build our classroom out of the materials that was provided to Then someone would have to, t to tell the two people that were in charge, Karen and Steph, of the areas of the classroom, what we did, and what these things meant. It, we spent most of our time on the classroom and, and didn't focus as much on other things. Things. After that, they brought it, they brought it one of of the ponies into uh, into the area that we were in, and we and it mostly ignored everyone and just ate grass. We 
did an activity which was they gave us a certain amount of materials. We had to use those materials to get it across the entire area that we were are using. And then and we had to get all the materials that we were using to the other side. Everyone in the class is had it also had to get to the other side. Or, or after we had it finished the first act activity, we then ended the activity with, without talking, which was much faster than the first one. After or they brought the pony in, and and someone led in the pony through through the course, but first while we were or building in, in the, the line that we were going to crawl all across and then get all the things across. We successfully, we did it successfully. About what we did last week and some of the stuff we do this week. Then we went into the arena and started setting up. What we, what we do, what we, what we did was we were supposed to take the pony and pick up all the balls. There was a catch though. We weren't allowed to let go of arms. So we all so we all grip onto each other. I let the pony around as we all tried to pick up balls. It was very difficult but fun. After 